When I tell people my story, they don't believe it. I guess I wouldn't believe the story if someone else were telling it, but I'm telling it, and it's true, every word of it. It started when I was born, 56 years ago. But um, the real story began when I was 19 years old and I went to college. It was 1980. It was the first day of school at Sullivan County Community College up in the Catskills, about 110 miles from where I grew up. So I drove up there alone. I get the same old dreams, same time every night. Fall to the ground and I wait. I used to have this really old car. It was a Volvo, and it was a, a 1970 Volvo. Had like 130,000 miles on it, and the car was burgundy, and the hood was green. Actually, the car was called the old bitch. But the old bitch got me there. Sullivan was a community college. This wasn't some long-standing institution of higher learning. All these station wagons are dropping kids off. I was nervous, I just got to the school. I didn't know anybody, I was a freshman. I was never the captain of the football team in high school. So I was never really, like, popular. So I'm walking around trying to find where my dorm is. Meanwhile, all these people are coming up to me, saying, hi, how are you? How was your summer? Mine was great. How was yours? Super. Why are they asking me how my summer was? I don't know. Everybody's being extremely friendly to me, and they're going out of their way to do it. I don't mean just a high. I mean claps on the back and high fives. And I was a little bit bewildered by this because no one gets this kind of a welcome their first day at school. And girls were kissing me like fully kissing me, saying, I'm so glad you came back. And I was saying thank you and hello back, but I had never been there before and I didn't know them. And it was bizarre. And the next thing I heard from right behind me, welcome back, Eddie. Eddie, how are you? Eddie, hi. I'm like, my name's not Eddie. I don't know what you're talking about. I just got up here. Sure, Eddie, you're really funny. You're really funny, real funny. I'm like, I'm not Eddie. I don't know who Eddie is. Welcome back, Eddie. They were all sick. I finally made it to this dump of a dorm room. And before a minute had gone by, who now? Who now is going to come to find Eddie? I had been to college the previous year with Eddie, and I knew that he wasn't coming back to school. As soon as this guy turned around, I, 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 was, I was actually shaking. I was, I, I know I, the color from my face dropped because I knew it was his double. He had the same grin, the same hair, the same expressions. It was his double. And I see this guy's face and he's like, just standing there. The first thing out of my mouth was, were you adopted? And, and I was like, yes. I said, is your birthday July 12th? He said, yes. I was like, July 12th, 1961. Oh my God, I said, you're not gonna believe this. I said, you have a twin brother, you have a twin. Oh my God. I said, come with me. And the two of us are crammed at this phone booth, shoulder to shoulder, and you know, we have to like close the door of the phone booth. And I'm trying to put the, the coins in, and they keep falling on the floor, and Bobby's picking up the coins. And he calls this guy, and he's like, hey, Eddie, you're not gonna believe this, you're not gonna believe this. Eddie, Eddie, you're not gonna believe this. This guy's more hysterical than I am, like, weirded out. Eddie, you're not gonna believe this. So I was just like, give me the phone. So I'm like, hi, Eddie. Yes? But it was my voice that said, yes. And I said, hi, Eddie. My name is Robert Shafran. And um, I'm eating all these people who say I'm you. And he said, uh-huh. Yeah, I've been getting some calls. I said, uh, were you adopted? And he said, yes. 
And I said, when was your birthday? July 12th. And I said, do you know what the name of the agency was? And he said, no, hold on. And I heard him go like, mom. And he came back and said, Louise Wise Services. Sometimes when you are just having a dream, and you know this can't be real, this can't be real, but you know there's nothing you can do to stop it, start it, change it, you just go with it. And that's what I was doing. I just wanted to see what was gonna happen next. And I'm like, let's go. Let's go meet Eddie. So we got into the old bitch. It was about nine o'clock at night, and it's about a two hour ride. And we were speeding on Route 17. We were going 100 miles per hour, perhaps more. We were speeding. Driving as fast as this car would go. It was shaking. And we got pulled over by a New York State trooper. And as I roll down my window, there's this gigantic cop with like the sunglasses, even though it's nighttime, and the big hat. He said, you know, I clocked you at 88 in a 50. Son, you better have a really good reason. And I was like, well, officer, you're never gonna believe this. The two of us are like yelling at this guy. You, you don't know, this guy, this guy has a twin brother. He was adopted and we're going to Long Island to go see. And, and, and the guy was, yeah, right, you know. Here's, here's your ticket, have a good day. And on to Long Island we went. So we got there, but it's like the middle of the night. And it's this really quiet neighborhood. So we get out of the car and I walked up this little path to the house. The lights were on in the house. And I reached out to knock on the door. And as I reached out to knock on the door, it opens. And there I am. His eyes are my eyes and my eyes are his eyes. And it's true. They looked exactly alike. They're duplicates of each other. There was no doubt in my mind that they were twins. He's going, oh my God, I'm going, oh my God. He's going, holy crap, I'm going, holy crap. They just looked at each other and they moved it. They, every time Bobby moved his head, Eddie moved. And then Eddie would move and then Bobby would move. Like, like they were looking at a mirror. It was the weirdest thing. It was like the world faded away. And it was just me and Eddie. So I'm in the newsroom. It's the middle of a busy day. We got a call from somebody who says they have an amazing story to tell us. We're not gonna believe this story. And my first reaction? Uh, it's a hoax. So I told our reporter, I want to rent a plane. In those days, we had enough money to do this. I, I want to rent a plane. I want to see these two kids face to face, or I don't believe this. We flew the journalist up to Sullivan Community College, and he called me and he said, Howie, it's true. It's true. And I remember saying, oh my god, this is a great story. This is a memorable, heartwarming story. And then the story went from being amazing to incredible, okay? From amazing to incredible. 